There's something about creating things with the closeness of hand tools that makes these huge projects worth it. My name's Clint, and now and then I pursue a big passion project. I went onto the Scottish Wood website and decided to buy the longest piece of lime wood I could find. It was about £85. My plan was to create a story carving, much like my St Edmund carving which sold a couple of years ago, but this time make it about the story of the Greek Titan Prometheus. So first, I needed a design. After hours and hours of research, finding the best way I could to fit the story into digestible panels and create a flowing kind of feeling to the whole piece. This is the design I came up with. I mostly used Pinterest and a few anatomy books by Bern Hogarth for inspiration. So with the design all drawn on the lime wood, I'm now going to take you through the rather wild story of Prometheus while you watch the carving take shape. Our story begins during the Titanomachy, which was a 10 year series of battles between the Titans and the Olympians of ancient Greece. The prize for winning this war? Domain over the cosmos. Prometheus, a titan, decided in his wisdom and through the power of foresight to join the Olympian forces. He and his brother Epimetheus aided Zeus and the Olympians in defeating the titans, who were then imprisoned in Tartarus, a kind of hell in Greek mythology. Zeus then gave Prometheus and Epimetheus the task of creating all life on Earth. Epimetheus was tasked with the creation of all the animals, whilst Prometheus created humans. He sculpted them from water and earth, creating them in the image of the gods, but without any of their power, as Zeus requested. He created them to be the noblest of all creatures on Earth, allowing them to walk upright so that they might look towards the heavens. The spark of life was then breathed into Prometheus's creations by Athena, the goddess of wisdom, war, and craft. Meanwhile, Epimetheus distributed gifts from the gods to all creatures on Earth. He gave them fur to keep warm, hardened shells for protection, strong wings for flight, the ability to swim underwater and superior speed and strength. Because Epimetheus lacked the foresight of his brother, however, this meant that there were no gifts left for the humans. This led Prometheus to look upon his creations with pity, knowing that he had to protect them and provide for them in the harsh world in which they existed. Prometheus's next task from Zeus was to decide how sacrifices would be divided. A meeting was arranged at Macone between the gods and the humans to make this decision. Prometheus killed an ox and then proceeded to split the spoils into two bowls. Because of his love for the mortals, he decided to try and trick Zeus. In one bowl, he placed all the good cuts of meat, but covered them with entrails and the stomach to make it look repulsive. In the other bowl, he replaced all the bones, but wrapped them in the ox's fat to make them look appetizing. Zeus, when presented with these two bowls, realised that Prometheus was trying to trick him. Angered by this betrayal, he now had an excuse to exercise his wrath on the mortals below, punishing them by hiding the precious gift of fire. This led to humans being left in the dark at night, shivering in the cold, and caused Prometheus a great sadness. Pitying his beloved creations, Prometheus decided to steal fire for the humans even though he knew he was certain to face retribution from Zeus as a result. One night, he climbed to the top of Mount Olympus and crept into Hephaestus' forge, the god of blacksmithing, who created all the god's weapons. He took a spark from the hearth, keeping it alive in a dried fennel stalk, and brought it down from Mount Olympus to the mortals below. Prometheus taught the humans how to use the precious gift of fire so they were less dependent on the gods for their survival. This fire not only kept the humans warm, but it allowed them to see in the dark, to cook their food, and it sparked their creativity. 
Conversely, it also allowed them to forge weapons and wage wars. It was a catalyst for the best and the worst of human nature, accelerating knowledge, art and power. When Zeus discovered this second betrayal by Prometheus, he decided to punish the Titan himself. Hephaestus was ordered to create unbreakable chains and shackles which were used to bound Prometheus to a mountainside. Zeus then created an eagle to tear Prometheus's liver from his body every single day. Each night his liver would grow back, only to be ripped out from him the next morning, repeating the cycle for eternity. Even through all his suffering and torment, Prometheus never regretted helping his beloved humans and stood by the decision to bring them the fire that the gods cherished so much. Eventually, after many years, Zeus allowed his son Heracles to break Prometheus' shackles and kill the eagle with an arrow. Prometheus, being a bearer of foresight, had some information that he wouldn't divulge to Zeus until he was freed. So when he was freed, the Titan revealed to Zeus that should he wed the goddess Thetis, their resulting son would be more powerful than his father. This led Zeus and his competitor for her hand, Neptune, to avoid her and instead wed her to a mortal man named Peleus. The son of Thetis and Peleus turned out to be none other than Achilles. All in all, this carving took around 170 hours to complete and you might be asking yourself what would drive someone to do such a thing and why this story in particular. Well a big part of it is because I've been a huge fan of mythology from a young age, right from when my dad first showed me Jason and the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans, you know, the old ones. But also this is a story which I think people can draw inspiration from even today, as you can with many ancient stories. I see it as a story of courage, and a story of doing the right thing despite the suffering you may endure as a consequence. It's also a story of the dangers of power. When the humans received fire, yeah, it advanced civilization. It allowed humans to live more comfortably and then spread across the world. But it also brought about war and it made men into kings who then enslaved other men. There are many different versions of the Prometheus story uh, some mention Pandora, a woman sent by Zeus to punish humankind. Others mention that Prometheus never really intended to help humans with fire at all, but rather envied Zeus and so wanted to hurt his reputation by stealing and playing with his fire. Even so, at the end of the day, it's mythology, and I feel like it's open to interpretation. I prefer this account of the story because, of all the versions, it has the most profound effect on me. And to me, that's the whole point of art. It's the very reason I spent so much time designing and carving and painting this piece. I mean, yeah, I did it because mythology is cool. There's no doubt about that. But the reason it kept me up until the late hours and had me fussing over all the details my tiny human brain could handle is because of the power of the story. Before we have a look at the final piece, I just want to thank my three patrons with this small but professional parade. Here it comes. I decided to take a line from Prometheus Bound, an ancient Greek tragedy written by Aeschylus around 450 BC, and make it the title of this piece. I am Prometheus, giver of fire to mortals. Thanks for watching, I will catch you next time.